now the Senate is a fifty-fifty election. Democrats holding the majority of things in the Congress. Well, Vice President Kamala Harris acting as the type of the Senate is very diverse, kind of the structure of the board and acting as the Democratic Congress. In the Senate, minority leaders are not Kamala Harris, serving with the majority of these Congress members in 2007. Tonight there are 35 Senate seats up for election, and the Democrats are going to 14 of these seats up while the Republicans are going to be in There are 36 Democrats and 29 Republicans not up for election. The Democrats want to hold the Senate, want to hold the Senate, and they're going to be able to every single one of their seats, and they're going to be able to see the Senate here, not black and The Republicans only one seat in the Senate, but they're going to be able to see the Senate. If there is one of the Democrats, they're going to be able to see the Senate. States highlighted in dark red and blue have the entire incumbents. And at 7 p.m. on the East Coast, there's the first poll closing of the night in the states of Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, South Carolina, and Vermont. Indiana, we can project the Republican Party and the election in the second term of the Senate after being elected to 16 years in 2016. In Kentucky, Senator Van Paul is going to return to the upper chamber of Congress and the Democratic vote for the Supreme Court. Down in South Carolina, we have a victory for Republicans in the Scottish Union in the second term. In Florida, it's currently too early to call the Supreme Court of the Republicans and the Republicans and the Democratic Party. In Georgia, it's also clear that the problems with Senator Raphael are not going to be the challenge of Mr. Walker in what has been one of the most closely watched bills, closely watched and nationalized races of the year. Due to a libertarian candidate being on the ballot, the runoff will be held on December 6th, 1850. Finally, Vermont will be the Democratic Congressman Patrick Peter Welch, who will see retiring Senator Patrick Lee. He has served for the five decades in the U.S. Senate. Welch, after they have the only second Democratic senator ever elected from the United States. And after those poll closings, we have the Democrats at 37 and 76, and the Republicans at 33. And the second is Florida and Florida. It's now 7.30 on the East Coast, and we have poll closings in three states with competitive Senate races North Carolina is too early to call the Republican Congressman Ted Burns, and former Chief Justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court, the Democratic Republican Chief Justice. Both are seeking their place retiring the Republican Richard Burns, so much for the third term. Both are seeking their place retiring the Republican Richard Burns, so much for the third term. In Ohio, the highly anticipated race to succeed to the Republican Senator Bob Portman unfolds between the Republican Richard Burns and the Republican Congressman Tim Ryan. Right now, it's too early to call the Following these poll closings, those poll closings, the Democrats remain at 37 and the Republicans remain at 32 Senate seats. The, the Democrats and Republicans remain at 32 and 37 and 32 Senate seats, respectively, in the side of races in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and Ohio. It's 8 p.m. and we have a huge number of poll closings from the states of Alabama and Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, Maryland, Missouri, New Hampshire, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Alabama, Judy Britt, will become the first woman elected to the Senate from Alabama. Seeing a long time to be with the struggle to be retired in the state of the state of the Congress. I'm sure William Paul has won the election to a third term in Connecticut, not a major surprise here. In Florida, we have a major call to make. Marco Rubio has won a third term representing the state of Florida against the Democrat Valdez. As you can see, Rubio has won by just over 10 points in a state that's shifting rapidly right there. Out in the Midwest, Tammy Duckworth has won another term. In Kansas, Jamie Lynn will be at the end of the first election. In Maryland, Kristen Holland has won another term in representing this two states. In Missouri, Attorney General Eric Schmidt will succeed in the 4-1, beating Democrats in the first ballot. 
Senator Maggie Hassan from the Republican Party, playing out in a state that often seems by large margins to be election. The Biden won the state by seven points in 2020, and the Republican only won only won the state by 2,000 votes in 2016. We'll have to see if that comes when the train gets to achieve the victory. For now, the answer is to be followed. In North Dakota, John Hogan is going to be elected to the second term. We also have an update um, in Ohio: 25 percent of the vote. Tim Ryan is leading by two or two and a half points right now. We should expect the race to be a lot of information. Oklahoma, two of these limited games, one of the first ones in the second term. Also in Oklahoma, Congressman Mark Wilson will succeed long time since he went off. He resigned in the end of the congressional session next year. Pennsylvania, one of the most competitive races of the night, between Republicans and the Ogden Democratic Union, Dr. John Fetterman. Ogden Fetterman, who are both running to replace Republican Pat Toomey, have been the nastiest pair of campaigns this year. Fetterman has criticized the Oz for seeing the opportunity and attitude of running for office in the state after being president of the United States for most of his life. On the upper hand, Oz has called the question of Fetterman's ability to serve after the latter suffered a stroke in the state's history of the state's environment. Finally, in South Dakota, John F. Toomey will be in a fourth term for Senate. After those poll closings, the Democrats and Republicans sit in sit tied in four seats. In Georgia, New Hampshire, North Carolina, Ohio, and Pennsylvania gets to be called. It's 8.30 on the East Coast, and we have one poll closing from the state of Arkansas. In Arkansas, Republican John Rosen will win the election in the landslide of this overwhelming Republican state. And after this poll closing, Republicans have 41 seats while Democrats win. It's 9 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have another batch of poll closing from Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, New York, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. In Arizona, it's too early to call between Democratic Senator Mark Kelly and his Republican Senator Mark Masters. In Colorado, Senator Michael Bennett, the Republican girl of the day, faced an offer that some pundits have described as a super race. Today is the minute candidate of the GOP this Senate cycle, as he says he supports same sex marriage and some abortion rights. Right now, the race is too early to call. We have an update uh, on Georgia with 55% of the vote reporting. The race is too close to call, with Crystal Walker holding a half point lead over Senator Warnock. The Uber candidate has yet reached the majority of the vote, with the half point lead over Senator Warnock. The can project that Chuck Grassley has yet again won the election representing the state of Iowa. Grassley has been serving the Senate since 1980 and has been able to win some past three elections. Strong support from both sides of the aisle. However, he has seen the size of the margins showing again in recent years, likely due to his progressive behavior. Now at 89 years old, Grassley will defeat Democrat Michael Franklin by first in the Senate. In Louisiana, Republican John Kennedy is a no has been re-elected to the second term. In New York, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will win the sixth term. However, it's not yet clear who will retain that status for the next two years or return to the minority leader. Sherry Beasley currently leads by a point over Ted Budd in North Carolina, with almost half of the vote reporting. The race is still too close to the time now to close to call. In New Hampshire, Maggie Hassan leads John Golden by about a point of 45% of the vote. 43% of the vote in. It's too close to call in Ohio. The Judy Vance has taken a one point lead over Tim Ryan. Finally, in Wisconsin, the race between the GOP Senator Ron Johnson and Democratic Lieutenant Governor Michelle Lawrence is too early to call. Now, Republicans lead Democrats for Senate control of 43 seats to the Democrats' 41, with nine races in the state of the United States. Half past the hour, and we have some key updates for some Senate races. In Arizona, Mark Kelly holds a big speed of six points over Blake Matthews, with 54% of the vote reporting. 65% of the vote in Colorado. We can project that uh, Michael Bennett has won the election to a third term against Joe O'Day. As shown on this screen, Bennett has defeated O'Day by a margin of eight points across the state. In 
Georgia, Rafael Warnock has a race blocker to now holding the lead at 0.6 points with 60 and 8 percent over 40. New Hampshire remains too close to call with 67 percent of the vote in, as Hassan now leads the vote by two points. Ted Rudd now leads very easily by two points in North Carolina, and 73 percent of the vote. We now have Major Falden in Ohio. 81% of the vote in, Aiden Vance has been projected the winner. Leading Democrat Tim Ryan, 60 is probably good. The National Republic has spent millions of dollars trying to prevent a loss in this state. Vance has defeated Ryan by a margin of 60 points. Just when Donald Trump's election was working two years ago, but the decisive victory in the U.S. To the east in Pennsylvania, there's an odd lead to John Fetterman by three and a half points and two thirds of the vote counted. Finally, with 50% of the vote, Mandela Barnes holds a, uh, holds a razor thin lead over Ron Johnson in Wisconsin. Republicans now have 44 seats for the Democrats, 42 seats uh, after the call of Colorado and Ohio. It's 10 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have four closings in Idaho, Nevada, Oregon. Nevada, it's clear that it's called a race between Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Mosco and the Jewish challenger, former Attorney General Adam Laxalt. The race may be the Republican Party's best offer to pick up opportunity in the Senate as Laxalt is one of the strongest GOP candidates for this cycle. In Utah, Jewish Senator Mike Lee has won for a chance to see the candidate at the moment to be Democrats actually decided not to not feel not, not to nominate a candidate. In fact, he only increased the chances of House You can see though, he has defeated him only by a margin of about 17 percent. The Democrats are in at 42 seats and Republicans are now at 35. Now it's 11 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have poll closings in California, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. California Senator Alex Padilla has won his first term in the Senate after replacing Kamala Harris in 2001, after she resigned to take the vice presidency. In Idaho, Mike Frieco will win the election for the fifth term in the Senate. Ron Wyden has been re-elected for the fifth term in Oregon. And in Washington, Democrat Patty Murray has won his sixth term against Republican Tiffany Smiley for the fifth term of the Oregon. In some speculation, that this race might be more competitive than expected, since Murray's face has gone down in the past. Uh, that being said, she has won by a comfortable margin of 11 points. Now the Senate stands at 45 Democratic seats and 46 Republican seats, with seven races yet to be called. It's now midnight on November 9th on the East Coast, which is uh, Wednesday morning, and we have one full closing from Hawaii. In Hawaii, Senator Brian Schott, who was appointed in 2012 to succeed the late Senator Daniel Inouye, has won the election for his second full term. Democrats and Republicans are now tied at 46 seats in the third control of the Senate. It's 1 p.m. on the East Coast, and we now have our final poll closing of the night in the state of Alaska. In Alaska, Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski, known as one of the most moderate GOP senators in the country, uh, has been challenged by Coach Baca, um, Trump endorsed Republican challenger. Murkowski is described by most as a favorite, but it's a really difficult race. We have an update on Arizona. With 87% of the vote reporting, Mark Kelly holds a 2 point, point lead over Blake Masters. We'll have to see if Kelly is on the team. This day is the final results from the goal of the race. Hopefully, going to benefit Masters in the race. In Nevada, it's too close to call. Adam Laxalt is Cortez Mosco with a point by, um, by a point for 58% of the vote in. We now have to be now from the major call in New Hampshire. With 98% of the vote counted, Nike Hassan has won re election for the second term, defeating Republican Don Volta. Hassan has defeated Volta by about 3 percentage points in a state that Biden won by seven. Still a pretty close election, but Democrats are in the West. In North Carolina, we can project 95% of the vote voting, but Ted Budd has won the race to succeed Richard Burr, defeating Democrat Sherry Easton. As you can see, Budd is defeating Easton by five points across the state, holding the seat in the 
Pennsylvania remains very tight as Dr. Oz is able to put him in shrinks to her shrinks to point and a half of nearly 90% of the vote counted. We can now check that Ron Johnson has been re-elected to a third year in Wisconsin with your percent of voting. Uh, we can now be projected with Johnson's victory of roughly five points in the back of state. And after those races, the Senate map includes 47 Republicans and 47 Democrats. The five uh, races that we call. Good morning, everyone. It's 8 a.m. on the East Coast, and we have a turn of the in another battleground state. In Arizona, this is a big win. Senator Mark Kelly is the apparent winner of 99% of the vote reporting. Meeting Republican Blake Masters. Kelly's going to go on to serve his first full term in the U.S. Senate after being elected just two years ago in the 2020 special election. John Kelly, John Kelly. Uh, Masters, how, uh, even though Masters closed the gap significantly in the final weeks of the campaign, uh, it was not enough for him. It appears it was not enough for him to oust the Democratic incumbent as he's lost by 48%. With that call in Arizona, both parties are once again tied at 48 seats. Um, only Alaska, Georgia, Nevada, and Pennsylvania remaining are decided. It's November, uh, it's 10 a.m. on the uh, 10 a.m. on the East Coast, and we have a race alert. Uh, Alaska was 98%, 99% of the vote in. Um, uh, the Senate race is going to go to a second round of grand first vote. Um, Murkowski and as you can see, Murkowski only leads to Kimbaka by 0.87, by 0.8%, but the rate choice result is likely to have been a really great for the incumbent. So no changes for the Senate map after that update on Alaska. Uh, we have major calls to make at any time. In Nevada, with 99% of the vote counted, Adam Laxalt is the apparent winner, defeating Democratic incumbent Catherine Cortez Austin. Nevada has stated that for the last decade, the GOP has consistently targeted the common success. However, Laxalt will break that record along with the one election of Joe Lombardo as governor. Laxalt um, defeated Cortez Mosco by about, by a little over, um, um, by a little over, um, for, excuse me, by 0.36 um, percentage points. But this result could change um, if there is a big um, Meanwhile, Georgia's Senate race is headed to a runoff on December 6th. I'll show Warnock and Walker in that they will have to wait for the runoff next month as the candidate is going to the vote, which will definitely be a very important message. Pennsylvania, with 98 or 94 percent of the vote counted, is still too close to call. Oz barely leads Fetterman as we receive results from a Philadelphia Cafe Democratic area, but it's um, still unsure if that's going to be enough to throw a number of Governor Fetterman vote to come. With, that, with the call in Nevada, Republicans are now at 49 seats, just two away from the magic number of 51 that they need to reclaim the upper chamber of Congress. Uh, Democrats are still at 50. Uh, and now, now it's, um, it's uh, 1 p.m. on Friday, November 11th, a couple days after the election, and we have a major projection in the Senate. We can project that Mehmet Oz is the apparent winner in Pennsylvania, with 99% of the vote in. Oz will hold the seat for the GOP as succeeding Senator Pat Toomey to defeat him the Democratic nominee and Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman. Oz eats out and goes with victory over Fetterman, but there, um, but there will be an automatic recount since the march is under half a percentage point. After that call in Pennsylvania, Republicans have reached 50 seats, and uh, since Alaska's second round of ranked choice voting just has two Republicans, uh, the GOP is all the sure to control the U.S. Senate at this point in time. Although we don't have a specific win in that race. Uh, it's 6 a.m. on November 15th, exactly one week after election day. And we have a major call to make for the Senate. We can project that the Republican Party will win back and control of the U.S. Senate as they have now won 51 seats, erasing the 50 50 tie that Vice President Harris broke in favor of the Democrats uh, for the past few years. Mitch McConnell will reclaim the title of Senate Majority Leader in January when the next congressional session begins. We're projecting this because in Alaska, the Super House has won the second round of ranked choice voting, defeating the Trump back to the challenger Shilly Shabaka. Um, Shabaka has lost to Murkowski by about 13 percentage points in the 49th state. 
after that call in Alaska, Republicans sit at 51 Senate seats, while the Democrats remain at 48. The only race, the remaining race, is down in Georgia, where the agencies have run off of her on December 6th in a couple of weeks. Today is, uh, today is um, December 6th, 2022. It's currently 7 p.m. on the East Coast. It's the day of the Georgia Senate runoff between Senator Warnock and Herbert Walker. We can project that every single vote counted for Raphael Warnock has defeated Herschel Walker in this round, hoping to see for the Democrats for the next six years and getting full term in his first full term in the U.S. Senate. Uh, Warnock barely came out on top against Walker and the leading candidate by a uh, percent And now, the final Senate map includes 51 Republican Senate Republican seats and 49 Democratic seats. GOP gained Senate control by retaining uh, by holding on to all of their seats as well as flipping the um, Nevada from the red. All Democrats hold on to their seats in Arizona, Colorado, Georgia, and New Hampshire. Thank you all for watching this election night. I'm sorry if uh, you were hoping to see an election night um, in CNN or the MSNBC graphics, but I just, um, you know, and I'll try to do that in the future. But I wanted to get this election night out to you guys. I've spent uh, quite a bit of time working on it, updating, updating it along the line. A lot of stuff has changed, um, um, uh, but I'll, I'll make sure um, to, uh, uh, I'll be sure to um, cover the election uh, later, you know, after uh, Tuesday and uh, see the final results, see what I got right and what I got wrong. Uh, be sure to like um, the video and subscribe to the channel. Check out my non-political channel, you know, back to Lunch 7, and my Crown Rights channel, down to 666. Also, tell me down in the comments below which party you expect to win Senate control on Tuesday, or, you know, Possibly later, if you do not have all the results in just very nice. Um, and then, yeah, uh, we'll see how accurate my prediction was. I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things politics. See ya.